Today we will be taking a look at Challenger 2 tank and some of the problems the tank had and still has today. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate, playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus, a premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as a 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so nothing is stopping you, you can start playing immediately. For a long time, Challenger 2 had problems with the protection of the lower front plate. The lower front plate is only 60mm thick, which means that it can be penetrated even by World War II guns, which is extremely bad for a modern tank. There have been upgrades to the plate though. At first, they mounted explosive reactive armor on the plate, which would protect against some RPG rounds. But after the incident in Iraq in 2006, where a tandem-shaped RPG-29 projectile penetrated the lower front plate, it became apparent that the hull needed to be upgraded, but it took a while. It wasn't until 2016 that the upgrade to the hull was installed on Challenger 2 Theater Entry Standard, where additional Dorchester composite armor block was installed on the lower front plate. Another big problem for Challenger 2 is that it uses two-piece ammunition. That means that charges and projectiles are held separate from each other. And the turret is reserved for the projectiles, which would be APF-SDS and HASH projectiles. Since HASH is actually a form of plastic explosive, it shouldn't be ignited when struck by other projectiles. So, the actual lack of blowout panels and blast doors isn't as big of a problem as some people make it out to be. The charges, which are hazardous, are placed in the hull in protective bins. This doesn't mean that the tank is immune to cook-offs and explosions, but the tank's survivability seems to be satisfactory, especially considering the fact that it lacks any blowout panels. One problem with this is that the APF-SDS ammunition has practically reached the length limit, unlike its western counterparts which have one-piece ammo and can practically have around a meter long penetrators, the situation in Challenger 2 is limited by the turret's ammo storage and the gun breach, so the projectiles can't be nearly as long. Another problem with firepower is that the tank still uses a rifled gun. Contrary to popular belief, rifled guns are not more accurate and they have a disadvantage compared to smoothbore guns by having a much shorter lifespan, since the rifling in the barrel is more prone to damage than regular smooth surface. Now, since the introduction of Challenger 2 theater entry standard, the tank received a lot of armor upgrades, including the additional Dorchester plates on the side as well as explosive reactive armor. What is problematic about this upgrade is the significant weight increase. The tank now weighs 74.8 tons. Together with the crew, the tank weighs more than 75 tons. That means that it is possibly the heaviest tank in the world. And the engine doesn't help either. It is a 1200 horsepower engine with maximum of 2300 RPM. It is worse than any of its western counterparts, including the engines of Abrams, Leopard 2, Leclerc, etc. Coupled with that weight, it really pulls the tank down in mobility. A lot. Currently, the tank has good fire control systems since the test upgrade introduced a lot of cool features, and the tank has excellent protection as well, where the survivability is also somewhat satisfactory. But the tank lacks in mobility and the firepower department, especially since it uses two-piece ammo and the length of EPF SDS projectiles is limited. But there is hope. Challenger 2 Life Extension Program by Rheinmetall Biosystems Land introduces a new turret with ALF 55A1 gun where the tank would have one piece ammunition which would be stored in the turret with blast doors and blowout panels. This would improve on survivability and especially firepower, where the limit to the APF SDS length would be gone and the loader would have much easier time loading the one piece ammunition. 
Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles. Use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. That would be all, thanks for watching. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. If you can't, just leave a like on the video or subscribe if you are new. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.